99% of boys, 94% of girls under the age of 18 identify themselves as gamers. The average amount of time a young person spends playing video games, 10,000 hours by the time they turn 21. The average amount of seat time that a teenager spends in the four years of high school is 10,281 hours. I'm Patrick Smith. I'm a senior instructional designer at Texas State University in San Marcos. And my name is Alex Nagurney. I am an instructor at the University of Hawaii at Hilo in the psychology department. The course is, of course, an introductory psychology. It's a course that's a general education requirement, so all of the students essentially at the University of Hawaii are required to take the course. Despite that fact, the course typically has kind of low attendance problems. We tend to you're going to have some problems with in terms of um, like students being interactive with instructors and things like that. I needed to find a way to get the students into class interacting with me and interacting with each other. And that is why I sought Patrick's advice. And um, as, as an avid gamer myself, I am also interested you know, being an instructional designer as well and having been a teacher myself in the past as well. I've been interested for a while in you know, the gamification of learning. And I was doing some research and looking at some of the ways that we could improve uh, potentially on the things that Alex was talking about, you know, that student engagement, um, attendance, and basically the levels of satisfaction. And the kind of spin that I wanted to add to that was I wanted to find a way that we could add these game-based elements to a course, but not have the instructor have to change their entire teaching paradigm. Um, I, that's when I went to a conference a few years ago. Um, I found that that seemed to be the big hang-up. That you know everybody was saying, "Oh, there's so much potential in gamification," but then the practitioners, you know, the, the the teachers out there, when they tried to implement it, it was just such a complete mind shift that I wanted to see if there was a way to you know be able to add those elements in without having to have the instructor shake up everything that they thought about you know, how they taught their classes. One of the first elements that we came up with was we wanted to add some teamwork into the class. Uh, the sort of the method that Dr. Gurney had been using was more of a sort of a standard lecture-based mm -hmm. course, and uh, we wanted to give the students more of our socializers, you could say, the opportunity to work collaboratively with one another on several elements of the class. So um, that's one of the first things that we added. Um, Let's see, we could talk a little bit about the reading challenges if you'd like to. Right, prior to this course I'd given just um, essentially pop quizzes to students and called them pop quizzes. I actually called them attendance quizzes. We revised the name of that, started to call them reading challenges rather than attendance quizzes. And that emphasized to the students not so much that they were being tested, but that they were, like a gamer would be, they were being challenged to actually meet some kind of a goal. And, and once we made that change, I think students became much more much more engaged in those assignments. And there were also some incentives built into the class where if everyone in some particular group was in class on a given day, uh, everyone in that group actually got a couple of extra credit points, which was something that definitely brought attendance up. And that's, again, one of the main goals that I had set out for the course. And I think we achieved that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of a marketing change in that respect. But you know, adding that element of you know, allowing the students on um, certain reading challenges to work together as a team, uh, we saw a, sort of a drastic mm -hmm. result from that. Um, so then we uh, added in, I guess we could talk about Defend the Island next, of kind of the idea of a Defend the Tower type of game, where you have to sort of defend your position from some sort of an invading force, uh, but academically this time. So uh, we came up with an idea to allow the students as a group um, to become, I guess you could say, the experts on a particular topic that Dr. Nagurney would have uh, assigned to them or let them choose. And then the students presented, once they became experts, they presented or taught the class about that topic. And then the t uh, teams who were in attendance, who were listening to it, they actually got the chance to invade or they got the chance to ask questions of the team that was presenting and points could be earned based on whether or not they were able to stump that team or if the team was able to successfully answer the question, then that team would earn a point. And I think that was a pretty successful element that as well. That was very successful. We also added a kind of a badging system to, you know, to give students the ability to earn kind of that little bit intrinsic, a little bit extrinsic motivation of uh, having a badge that they could show and uh, they were honored for winning these badges uh, via announcements and also in class. 
you know, we did add a little bit of a point value buff to that later on, which incentivized it even more as well. And again, students took that very seriously. That's definitely a place that we saw a lot of success. Mm -hmm. And similarly, we actually added a leaderboard that would sort of take names out of the element and just show kind of class levels so that, you know, you knew yourself if you were at a level five and then you looked at the leaderboard and saw that there were people already at level 11 or 12, you knew that you needed to you know, you needed pick to start, up the pace Start doing bit. something better. Right. Um, so we added that element and uh, that I think was successful. One of the elements that we added to the class was the element of uh, side quests, we call them. And gamers will probably be familiar with that term. Side quests being optional activities that you can undertake in a game if you choose to to give you more time to sort of learn more about the world that you're in or to practice using a new skill that you've uh, acquired or whatnot. You know, for example, instead of students writing an essay on how neurons work, I gave them this side quest where they would actually kind of show us visually how a neuron works or kind of choose another way to get that idea across with the only requirement being that they not write a paragraph right. on neuron transmission. And students took those side quests very seriously. They were incredibly creative. Right, they broke a social norm In and public. looked at other people's reactions, <laughs> right. which was just fascinating to see the kind of stuff they came up with. That's an interesting as well, breaking a social norm in public and then having a friend videotape people's reactions right, to that right. so you can see it. And then we had a um, forum discussion in uh, La Lima, which is uh, UH's instance of Sakai, had a forum discussion where they could post the video of them breaking the social norm and uh, you know, talk about that. Uh, online. I was actually really impressed when I saw most of the side quests and I think students really enjoyed doing them. They mostly rated that was their favorite part of the course.